losing both my legs and uh, uh, significant use of my right arm. What, what year was that? I, I was injured in November of 2004. And then what happened after that? I spent uh, over a year recovering at Walter Reed, uh, and while I was at uh, Walter Reed, I met uh, our two senators from Illinois, Senator Dick Durbin and Barack Obama, uh, and they encouraged me to run for political office. Uh, so I went into a political life, ended up not winning the election, but um, from there I became uh, a veterans advocate, and for the last five years I've been working at um, the state of Illinois Department of Veterans Affairs, and then I was uh, again nominated by President Obama to help um, uh, to help uh, at the Department of Veterans Affairs um, at the federal level. Um, when did you get into, uh, when did you first try scuba diving? So I was an oceanography marine biology major at the University of Hawaii um, in, my, uh, in my past and uh, um, started diving there. I was, a, I was a student lab assistant and uh, worked on all sorts of research projects involving algae and um, so I actually had inherited this really old, um, you know, scuba, dive, scuba gear that was part of a set that probably, it just stayed at the university and, you know, as new um, lab assistants came in, you just, you just inherited it. Um, it was, it was amazing, you know, just the lead belt, no, no BC, uh, all of that old stuff. Um, and that's when I started scuba diving in Hawaii. And then I hadn't done anything for almost 20 years, um, uh, even though I had, uh, you know, I, I go pretty extensively in my 20s, um, and then I got back in the pool with Dive Heart. Um, what, what year was that? What year was the Dive Heart thing? Gosh, I want to say Dive Heart was about 2006, 2007, uh, probably 2007 when I was State of Illinois <coughs> Director of Veterans Affairs. How, how did you hear about it? How did you know so about it? So Dive Heart came to me. Um, uh, what had happened was, as the uh, Director of the Department of Veterans Affairs for the state, I had initiated a program to provide grants to um, organizations that wanted to help veterans with disability, veterans with post-traumatic stress, veterans with brain injury, um, long-term medical disability. And Dive Heart showed up, um, and Jim showed up actually, and said, so we have this program where we want to take veterans scuba diving, um, and uh, we'd like to apply for this grant. And, you know, the, 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 the criteria were disability, post-traumatic stress, um, brain injury, and they met almost every single category that we had. Um, most of the programs that came in would actually be able to help with one thing, mobility, or would be able to help with post-traumatic stress or a brain injury, but they came in and the, the program they presented to me was going to help veterans with all of these issues, and so uh, we gave them a grant. And then you, you tried it out? Well, yeah. How, how, what <laughs> I was, was going to let that pass me by. <laughs> what, was that, what was that like, having done it in the past and then... Um, I was a little apprehensive because I know how um, asymmetrical my body is now. And, um, you know, when I was wounded, like so many of our, of our military men and women, I was into peak physical conditioning. I was strong. I was powerful. I was flying a helicopter. Some of these guys were, you know, carrying 80 pounds on their back, running up and down mountainsides. And you go from that to being completely weak, unable to move your body, unable to even to you know, brush your own teeth. Um, and so you lose a lot of confidence in your own, uh, your body and your strength and your ability. Um, and it was amazing because it took a lot of time to work with me to figure out how we needed to set up, um, you know, the weights and everything for my particular body, how it is now. But once everything was right, I was completely, you know, neutrally buoyant in the water. It was zero gravity. Um, and I felt strong and powerful and I was able to keep up with everybody else just using my arms. So it was very liberating once, you know, we figured it all out and it, it's a real confidence boost. Where did you go? Did you... We, we, were, we were just in the pool at their facility. I didn't have a lot of time, unfortunately, um, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, just tell me, just so we have an idea, what's the extent of your injuries? I mean, what happened to you? Uh, sure. So I was hit by a rocket propelled grenade. Um, I was shot down. Uh, basically, the explosive came, um, they shot at my aircraft, and it exploded in my lap. So I lost my right leg at the hip. My left leg is amputated below the knee, um, and the entire back of my right arm was blown off, um, and it was, uh, the limb was salvaged, so, but I have very limited range of motion, and I have no feeling in half of it. When you, um, did you wake up in the hospital? Or, I mean, were you conscious through all that? When you woke up in the hospital, what did you feel? I mean, what, after, what was the immediate aftermath of that? Was that... 
So when I was hit, um, I, I was conscious for a little while. Um, we, ha we were able to land the aircraft, um, and uh, I passed out trying to fight the uh, a fire in the aircraft. And then um, I woke up again uh, at, in Baghdad, at Baghdad Emergency Room, but I don't remember any of that time. Uh, the next thing I remember is waking up in, uh, at Walter Reed 11 days later. It kept me in a, a medical coma for 11 days. I woke up in, ex in excruciating pain and unable to move any part of my body for a long time. Just, I just laid there and I couldn't even scratch my own nose or, um, you know, I couldn't, I didn't even have the strength to push the, um, the button that I had for um, uh, pain meds on demand. Uh, and I, I was in such excruciating pain I couldn't even push the button to get the pain meds delivered. Wow. And so after your kind of a little bit of recovery, what, what was going through your mind at that point? I mean, I wanted to go back to my unit. You ask any American GI laying in his or her hospital bed, what do you want to do? And they'll all say exactly the same thing. I want to go back to my unit, sir. I, I, I want to regain my ability to do my job. Um, and sometimes, and those goals change through your recovery, but it's always about getting back as much as you had before. And, and that's really the goal of what I've always tried to do with um, our veterans and, and those who have disabilities is show people that they can live just as full of life. It may be different, um, but you can still do all the things that you love to do before. You just have to learn how to adapt and, and, and be able to do um, uh, what you were doing before. And that, this is kind of it. You know, a lot of folks won't even try scuba um, when they were physically able and to tell someone that, um, you know, the ones who scuba before you, they, they sort of understand, they're a little skeptic, but to go to a veteran who's wounded and say to him, you're going to learn to scuba dive, he thinks you're crazy. Um, and then you show him that he can do it, and um, and then the confidence comes back, and and it 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 bleeds over into other things. They think if I can do this, heck, I can go, you know, I can go apply for that job, or I can I can go drive my own car, or they, you know, why well, better learn to drive a car again because I really want to get to scuba class. So it it it, it really um, acts as a catalyst. The time in the pool and the time in the water is amazing, but it's the bleed over effect, the catalyst that it has in the rest of their lives. That's so amazing. Very good. Um, what made you decide you wanted to be, did you know from early on you wanted to be a helicopter, I mean, do the Black Hawk thing? How did you get into that? That's, uh, that sounds interesting. So I, I, uh, I had never wanted to be a pilot. I thought when I joined the Army I was going to become a linguist. Um, but uh, the only combat job open to women uh, was, uh, was helicopter pilots. And so I, um, I competed for it and, and worked very hard and was able to get it. It, it was an issue of fairness for me. Um, I was going to get equal pay and equal work, but um, I wasn't going to be, uh, you know, I didn't have to face combat the way the men did, and I just felt that was inherently unfair, um, and I wanted to take the same risk. I didn't want to go into combat, but I thought if my male counterparts had to face those risks, then, then I should too. So I, uh, I, I tried for aviation, and I got into it, and I loved it, and I just, you know, it, it's now such a part of who I am that I can't imagine a life without it. Um, so now... Tell me about yourself now, where, where you're at right now. So I'm running for Congress again. I must be crazy. I quit a perfectly good job in Washington. I was the Assistant Secretary for the Department of Veterans Affairs, working for Secretary Shinseki as a presidential appointee, and I just quit that job uh, 60 days ago and decided to come home to run for Congress. Um, I think we are at a time in our nation for um, people with, you know, serious motivations and, and a real practical approach to fixing problems, um, and I just you know, was getting more and more concerned that um, politics in this country was getting to be so divisive and not a lot was getting done. So I thought, all right, I'll give it one more shot. If you were going to, if you were going to, um, two sides to this. One, to someone who's uh, disabled or feels themselves disabled, what, what piece of advice do you give them? I mean, kind of in the context of what we've been talking about. What, what would you, what would you tell that person? Um, you know, it's funny, when I was in the hospital, people kept talking about a new normal, and I thought they were crazy, because I thought, my life can never, ever be normal again. I have no legs. I was a, you know, I, I what do you mean my life will be normal? Um, and I've learned that life does become normal again, and that's usually what I say to people, especially folks who have newly become um, disabled. Um, I'm a peer visitor for amputees, and I spend a lot of time going into hospitals days after, or even just prior to an amputation, to talk to um, other patients to try to prepare them for, for what life is and um, what I say to folks is that it will be different but it will be normal. Um, you know when I 
my life is no different than it was before in so many ways. When my husband and I fight, for example, we fight about him hanging wet, dirty towels on the doorknob, not about the fact that I don't have legs. You know, we fight about him not putting the toilet seat down, not because, you know, I use a wheelchair. So life is perfectly normal. You just have to work at finding ways to allow you to do what you want to do. You know, I may never run a marathon, but I do compete in marathons. You know, I may never be able to um, uh, do many of the physical things that I did before in the same way, but I can still do them. And, and scuba is one of those things. And, and Dive Heart is right out there showing, um, you know, those of, um, especially in the military wounded community, that life can be normal again. But what's really interesting are my conversations, not with the person that's disabled, but their family members and their loved ones and their friends, because I think oftentimes those people around you who have never dealt with disability before um, have very low expectations of you, not because of um, they don't think much of you, but because they think, oh my God, you've lost your legs, you're living your life in a wheelchair forever, you'll never be able to do anything, because that's all they know from popular culture. And when they see their loved ones regaining strength, when they see their loved ones, you know, getting on a plane and going to Cozumel to go scuba diving, it changes their perception of you and of what you can do and, and that just it builds up so it, it doesn't just begin and end with the individual that has the disability um, the positive effects changes the entire community of people around that person and really helps to propel this um, this uh, understanding that disability doesn't mean that your life ends it just means that it's just going to be a little bit different and you might have to work a little harder but you can get there and you would say that confidence is really the number one would you say, say that's kind of the thing, like just realizing? Yeah, it takes a lot of confidence to be disabled. It takes a lot of confidence to tell people, yes, I can do that. You know, get over the fact that I'm sitting here in a wheelchair. I can still go do that. And, and a lot of times that confidence isn't there when you first start, and you have to build that back up. Uh, for our military men and women who are wounded, that confidence is there inherently because they know what they can do from before. And so they start off at a better place. But I, I meet um, sometimes, um, you know, folks in the civilian community, uh, who don't have that confidence. Um, it's funny because kids who are disabled completely have that confidence. You see a disabled kid, you know, and he's doing, she's doing everything, you know, whatever it is, and it's the parents who are, who are nervous. The kids know that they can do just about anything they want to do, and they figure out, they problem solve and troubleshoot. But it's the people around them sometimes that lack the confidence. So you, you always had the can-do attitude? You must have. Would you say that? I don't know if I always had the can-do attitude. I always um, was a problem solver. So I always, you know, I, I, I like to break things down into chunks and fix the problem one chunk at a time. Um, but for me, uh, my life really literally began the day my buddy saved me in Iraq. You know, I, I passed out bleeding to death in my helicopter and um, uh, my crew could have left me there to die because they thought I was dead already. They could have saved themselves and left me for the recovery team to come in. And if they'd done that, I'd be dead. Um, but they fought hard to, to keep me with them, and, and they carried my body out, and because of them, I'm still alive. So it, it's not as much about the can-do attitude as it is honoring what they did to, to save me. And so I'm not going to sit in a dark feeling sorry for myself, um, because I know what they did that day, and I have to live up to that. Wow. So after the fact, you just kind of approached it like, this is this is what I'm going to overcome now at this point. This is the... Yeah, it was Would more like, I want to do this, what do I have to do to get to the point where I can do this, you know? And I, I, it's been very freeing to have gone through this experience because, I, and I say this a lot jokingly, but it really is um, such at the core of why, how I live my life now is on the worst day of what I do, ain't nobody shooting an RPG at me. <laughs> you know, there's not, you know, n there's no explosive device, you know, blowing up in my lap quite literally. So... How bad can it possibly be? So you throw me in the pool. I either sink or swim, you know? We're going to figure it out, you know? So just explain. So that is an artificial... Yeah, this is... Uh, yep, wow. it's... Uh, so I lost my, my leg right here. Um, and that's an entire artificial leg. I, I normally wear both, but I was I have had a long week um, uh, of uh, doing a lot of walking. I actually had um, uh, my National Guard duty this past weekend. I did three days, and I was in uniform and with my legs on for three straight days, and so I'm a little sore. And I knew I was going to be with friends today, and uh, and that Jim wasn't going to give me a hard time about not wearing my right leg, so <laughs> it's sitting at home resting. <laughs>
Anything else you want to say about uh, Dive Hard or any, any well, other? Yeah, I, you know, I think that those people who are watching this, it, it's more about, oh, look at those nice people taking the wounded veterans for, for a scuba dive. It's so much more than that. It spreads. It, it spreads beyond the individual. It, it changes, as I said, the community. It changes the person, how they approach their lives. And then the other people that they touch, you know, when they touch other people with disabilities, and they can say, hey, I've been scuba diving, come with me. And then, then you go to, then it spreads to, you know, from, from veterans with missing limbs to kids with autism to people with spinal cord injuries. And, and it just spreads. And um, so you have to look at this beyond a sports or recreational program to get, you know, it, it's not about let's just take, let's be nice and we'll take care of these, these poor people that are disabled. You have to look at this as this is really a program that empowers people. And it spreads around the world. You know, when you when the team goes to Cosmo, for example, or you know wherever they go um, abroad to go scuba diving, and the people in those countries that don't have you know um, ADA laws and disability see a bunch of disabled people going scuba diving, it changes the folks in that nation, and it changes the way leaders and people who watch the programs on TV in those nations see what dis disabled people can do, um, and that only just you know, it, 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 it's this ripple effect that, effect that goes out. So that's really my main thing is think about this. Yes, at the core, it's giving somebody a really nice time in the pool one day and maybe taking them on a trip, but it's so much more than that. Thank you. Thank you. I was crazy off the chart. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to become a resident of Illinois <laughs> appropriate. <laughs> that happens awesome. to be true. You encapsulated <laughs> everything. Angry. That was great. Yep. That's true. It's easy when you're speaking from your heart, so. Wow. Yeah. I got chills. Yeah. Don't talk to me about raising the debt ceiling. <laughs> 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 that was awesome. Yeah. Oh, my God. Good stuff. Thank you.